Holy Father, we thank you for this precious time, this grace to hear your word in the English service of Sunrise Church. We pray uh, that we may know what you have given us. You have given your Son. You have given your Son, Jesus Christ. And through him we have received life, grace. We have received your gifts. We have received your promise. We have received so many wonderful things through your Son, Jesus. We pray that we may acknowledge his name. We may acknowledge what you have given us. We pray that we may uh, be strengthened in your grace. We may be free by your truth. We may know you and receive our inheritance unto eternal life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Hello. This is the English service of Sunway Church. And in this service, we want to know about what is taught in the barrier teaching, in the barrier movement. We want to understand what God has given us. God has given us so many wonderful things through his son, Jesus. This is all his will. This is all his plan. This is all the grace we have received through Jesus. We can be nothing but thankful and, and in thanksgiving we therefore serve and then we also follow and we also spread the barrier movement. And today we want to talk about him coming in the name of Jesus. He came in the name of Jesus. And the word of God today is found in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 to 25. The word of God is found in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 to 25. Let us read from verse 20. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Verse 21, she will give birth to a son, and you want to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Yes. So we have heard, we have just been reading about, about how Jesus came to us on this earth and how he was given the name Jesus. And in the previous week, we talked, we talked a lot about the angel of Jehovah, the importance of this name and how this, how this compares with the Son of God. We talked, we talked a lot about the duty of role and the duty of a representative, but today we, are, we, can, we can understand this sermon as part two of, of the previous one. We are talking about the Son of God coming in the name of Jesus. The Son of God, Jesus, He is the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God and He came in the flesh. So this is, the one, this is the one of the foundational understanding that we must have. Jesus is the Word and He came in the flesh. So this is significant. He is the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God and He came in the name of Jesus. He came in the name of Jesus. As we just read in this Bible passage, as we just read in this Bible passage, he was given the name of Jesus. Yes. So this is important. So when somebody, when somebody comes to us, they always come with a name. And that name, it, it has meaning. It has meaning and it often involves it often involve what that person does. Okay. For example, if, for example, when we go to the office, when we go to the office, and we work, and there are employees in a company. They often have the type. They often have. 
they often have the title and that title, for example, executive or, or stock manager or directive manager and so on. And, and that title implies what they do. So, so the Son of God, he is the Son of God and he came in the name of Jesus. He came in the name of Jesus. He came to give us the life of God. He came to give us life. And so you and I, when we, when we are here, when we hear the word of God preached, we should always gain the life of God. We should always gain the life of God through Jesus. Jesus came to give the life of God to us. Yes, Jesus, he came and he gave us his name, he gave us his blood, and he gave us his word. He gave us his word. For example, for example, we all have parents. We all have parents and and when when we are and when and when we are with our families, when we are with our families and we spend maybe Christmas time, we maybe spend Christmas time or Easter time, and then there were presents. There were presents given. There were presents given and we share those presents with our family members. They are gifts given by our parents. But in a similar way, Jesus, Jesus, he is the Son of God. He is the Word who came in the flesh and he gave us his name. He gave us the name of Jesus. He gave us the blood, the blood of Jesus. He gave us his word. So let us just look at some Bible passages just to see where these things are. Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 2 to 10. Uh, let us read. Let us read. So we have just been discussing that Jesus, when he came to us, when Jesus had come to us, he gave us, he gave us his blood. And along with his blood, he gave us his body. So whether it be the blood of Jesus or the flesh of Jesus, this was given to us. So let us read from verse, verse, let us read verse 4. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. Let us read five, verse five. Therefore, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice an offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you are not pleased. Then I said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do your will, my God. Let us read verse 9. Then he said, Here I am, I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second. And verse 10, And by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. Yes. And it says, let us read from verse 17. Let us read 17. Then he adds, their sins and lawless acts I will remember no more. So, so it goes on, it goes on to talk about the body of Jesus Christ, the body of Jesus Christ, how this was given to us and we have been made holy through the body of Jesus Christ. Let's also read John uh, Hebrews again. Hebrews, Hebrews, Chapter, chapter 9, chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 13. The blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer sprinkled on those who are ceremonially unclean, sanctify them so that they are outwardly clean. How much more then will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, Cleanse our consciences from acts that lead them to death, so that they may serve the living God. Yes. 
So let us again, let us again look at verse, verse, um, verse 1 John. Let us look at 1 John. 1 John. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. First John chapter 1, verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we are fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, purifies us from all sin. So this is what we are talking about. This is what we are talking about. The Bible says, wherever you look at it, that Jesus came with his blood. He came with his blood. He came with his flesh to sanctify our spirits. We have received this blood and this word. We have received the name of Jesus into our spirits. And because we have received this into our spirits, we have gained life. Remember what John, what John says in chapter, in John chapter 20, verse 31 to 32. Jesus did many other miracles in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, and when you believe, you may have life in his name. So again, so we must, we must, it is very useful that we, that we group this together, that Jesus, he came to us, he came and through the Son of God, through the Son of God, we have received the name of Jesus, we have received the blood of Jesus, and we have received the word of Jesus. So in the past, in the Old Testament, we have the angel of Jehovah and the angel preached words, the Ten Commandments to Moses. But these, but these commandments, these words, they, they showed how righteous God was. They showed how right he was, how, how stern uh, the God of the law was. But because people broke, those, broke the law of Moses, there was no forgiveness. However, through the Son of God, however, through the Son of God, the name of Jesus was preached to us. The name of Jesus was, was conveyed to us, and through the name of Jesus, through the Son of God, we have received the name of Jesus, and we have received also the blood of Jesus, and we have received also his word. Yes. So, so he came and he gave the forgiveness of sins. He came to forgive the forgiveness of sins. So let us read it together. Let us read. Let us read Matthew chapter 9. Verse 2. Matthew chapter 9, verse 2. Let us read it together. Some men, chapter 9, verse 2. Some men brought to him a paralyzed man lying on a mat. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the man, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Yes, yes. So he's, Jesus is saying, Jesus is saying, and he is proclaiming not to this, just to this person, but to all, take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Let us read Colossians. Let us read the book of Colossians, chapter 1. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 13 to 14. So let us read it. Verse 13. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and has brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So we have received the forgiveness of sins. Yes. So, so we must understand that when, for example, this is what is different, this is what is very special about the barrier movement, about the barrier teaching, it is talking about the truth, the truth that came through Jesus. 
So we must be careful when other churches say, oh, I believe in God. I believe in God. God is a great God. God is a great God. He controls the universe and I believe in him. And that's it. That's what they say. So we must be careful for when you talk about God, you can talk about any other, any other kind, any other, any, any sort of message that you can imagine. And yet we have to be more specific. But God, through his son, Jesus Christ, he came to give the forgiveness of sins. He came to forgive the forgiveness of sins. So we must, be, we must be careful when we think, oh God, oh God, oh, he has given his commandments and I want to obey those commandments and so on. Then, but what, so although this may be true, what happens when one does not obey those commands? So, so what, who is God? Who is God? And what did he provide through Jesus Christ, his son? And so we must be careful, for again, we must be careful about how Jesus, Jesus came and he came to preach about uh, social liberation, a liberation from oppressive, uh, oppressive authority, government authority, or maybe Jesus came to show a very humane example about, about um, giving charity to the poor and helping the poor and being mindful of those who are oppressed politically, for example. Although these may not be wrong, these, these are, of course, these are not wrong. But what we want to emphasize is that, is that God is the God of the truth. God is the God of the truth, and by the truth we are set free. So first and foremost, the Son of God, He came to give the forgiveness of sins, and this was given to you and I. For example, let us read in Luke chapter 24. Luke chapter 24. So we must, and Pastor Kiron Kim has been very careful. What is the Bible about? What is the message in the Bible? The message in the Bible, the word in the Bible, what is it about? And explain it in five seconds. So this is the kind of mentality we should understand. What was given through Jesus opposed to Moses or opposed to any other kind of religion. So it says, in places, among many, it says in places like this, uh, Luke chapter 24, verse 46 onwards, he told, Luke chapter 24, verse 46, he told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. So here, so Jesus, he died for our sins as promised by God and then he was raised from the dead on the third day by the Holy Spirit. And after that, and repentance for, the give, for forgiveness of sins was preached, was preached in his name in the name of Jesus to all nations, to the ends of the earth. So this is what we are trying to understand. This is what we should know. Through the Son of God, the forgiveness of sins was preached to us. Yes. So Jesus' is name. And, so, and so, so we must come to understand that the message of the Bible is a very, is a very simple and life-giving message. It is a life-giving message. So in the in the Old Testament there may be uh, there may be descriptions about about uh, temple officials and royal officials that all served David that served the kings of the past and and it talks about the tale of the exiles that came from Babylon and what struggles they faced and the tales of the tales of the patriarchs Abraham and Moses and David and but what the Bible is trying to teach us in a nutshell is that the Son of God, He came to forgive sins. He came to preach the forgiveness of sins. So the name of Jesus, what does this mean? The name of Jesus, what does this mean? It means, just as we read in the Bible passage today, He will save His people from their sins. He will save His people from their sins. We are free from our sins by the name of Jesus. The first act, 
that a Christian should ever do, the first act that any Christian, according to the truth, should ever do is to receive the forgiveness of sins. This is the start. Before we think about anything else, we should think about the forgiveness of sins, accepting the forgiveness of sins. For example, let us read it together. Let us example um, Acts chapter 10, verse 43. Acts chapter 10, verse 43. Verse 43, let us read it together. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The forgiveness of sins through his name. Yes. And... Let us also read, let us also read in places like uh, John, John chapter 8, John chapter 8, verse 31 to 32. Let us read it together. John chapter 8, verse, thon, verse 31 to 32. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. So what this means in more, more literal translation, if you abide in my word, 32, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Let us read um, 36. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. You will be free indeed. For example, for example, uh, when we are when we live us when we live in the outer society, when we live in the outer society, we may have we may for example we may have forgot to deliver a message to somebody at a critical time. For example, we needed to in in the in the business world and when we when we are working in companies and then our superiors they tell us to send this message. They they tell us to send this message to to a branch office and, and for example and, and because we are human we make mistakes and we forget to tell that person and then because we, because we forget to tell that person and then we are in big trouble and so we can make this we can make this to we can refer this to anything so we may have forgotten to do a chore uh, given by our friend or our family uh, we may have forgotten to do something and so we are in big trouble and then because, because a person is in trouble, and then they get all nervous, don't they? Because they forgot to do what they were supposed to do, and they, they get all nervous. And then a person, and because he's in trouble, and, he, and he's in a difficult, perplexing situation, and then he gets nervous, and then he starts to sweat, and he gets, he gets all fidgety and so on, just like a normal person would do. But then... But then we can imagine that that co-worker or that that family member, he says, oh, that's okay, I've, I already received the message. I already received the message. I already received the message, though, you don't have to worry about it. And so immediately that co-worker, he is relieved. He is relieved because, he is relieved because the person already got that message. He already got that message and it was already done beforehand and so on. Yes. And so, this is the kind of thing, this is the kind of thing, uh, the relief, this is the relief, this is the spiritual relief that we have, because we have received the forgiveness of sins. We have received the forgiveness of sins into our spirits. And, and again, and again, the more, the more, the more older a person gets and the more responsibilities a person has, the more, the more challenges and complications there are in the world, the more complications a person will have in the world, and he gets all, he gets, he gets all anxious because the more older a person gets, he has to take care of family, he has to take care of his business, his livelihood, and bad news, uh, as the common nature of while we live in this world, bad news 
uh, comes again and again. And the moment, and we all know what this is about, the moment that we feel that we are on a steady level, steady playing field, and we feel a bit confident, and then we get some bad news about something going wrong. Yes, but, but when we hear that news, for example, when we hear about uh, when we hear about some good news, for example, if there was a parent, if there was a parent and he receives the good news, he receives some good news that, that his children have gone in, for example, gone to a good university. And so nothing is more refreshing. I think anybody, any parent would understand that nothing is more refreshing, nothing is more life-giving when a person's child has gone to a good university, has been accepted. And so we can realize, so when, so when the person themselves, they get accepted into a good workplace, or they get accepted into a good, off, uh, a good company, like in Korea there is Samsung, and if they get accepted there, or if they get accepted to a top 10 university, the, the news is refreshing to themselves, but it is 10 times more, I believe, more refreshing to a person's parents. And it's more life-giving uh, when the parents receive that news. So this is the kind of reaction in the world that we get. However, the Son of God, He came and He gave the forgiveness of sins. Jesus' name again wants to reiterate. Jesus' name means that He will save His people from their sins. And so the devil, and so the devil who is the enemy, who is the spir spiritually speaking, He is the enemy in this world. He is the enemy in this world. He tries to separate us from the life of God, from the life of God, from our relation, the spiritual, eternal relationship with God. The devil tries to separate us from our relationship with God. However, however, there is, there is the way to overcome it. It is by the blood of Jesus. Although the devil, the enemy, tries to deceive us. He tries to deceive us. He tries to make us guilty. He tries to make us guilty in condemnation. However, we are now saved by the blood of Jesus. It is the blood of Jesus which does the work. Let us read it together. Revelation chapter... First uh, John, First John chapter two, verse twelve. First John chapter two, verse twelve to fourteen. Let us just read it all together. I am writing to you, dear children, children. because your sins have been forgiven on account of His name. I am writing to you, fathers, because you have known Him who is from the beginning. I am writing to you, young men, because you have overcome the evil one. I write to you, dear children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know Him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you are strong and the Word of God lives in you and you have overcome the evil one. And let us also read uh, let us also read Revelation chapter 11, 11, chapter 12, verse 11. Chapter 12, verse 11. They triumphed over him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. So two things here. There is first the blood of the Lamb. And then again, the next part is by the word of their testimony. By the word of their testimony. So therefore, therefore, there was two parts here. First, that we accept by faith. By faith, we accept the blood of the Lamb, who is Jesus Christ. And then, number two, we give our testimony testimony by the Holy Spirit. It is the Spirit who testifies to this. It is the Spirit who testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. 
So you and I, in our flesh, we ourselves do not testify, but it is the Holy Spirit who testifies to us. So you and I, likewise, we should also go bravely out into the world. We should go bravely out into the world, no matter what the situation, no matter what the crisis, no matter what crisis comes against us, we should also go out into the world and we should also testify by the Holy Spirit about the blood of Jesus. Yes. So let us read it together. Let us read it together. About first first John. First John. Chapter 5, 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. Let us also read in places um, like Acts. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This, was, this is the command, this is the commission that Jesus has given us. So we ourselves, we do not do this, but once we have accepted the blood of Jesus, and we have accepted the blood of Jesus into our spirits, we gain life, we gain life, we gain the life of God, and then also, by the Holy Spirit, we testify. We have been set free by, from our sins by the blood of Jesus. So what I ask you, you and I today, that we all rely on the blood of Jesus, no matter what kind of condemnation that the enemy tries to deceive us, no matter what situation which confuses, which deceives, and which makes us think that we are not loved by God, and we are separated by God, and we are not worthy of God's honor and acceptance, no matter what the deception, we should rely on the blood of Jesus. The Son of God came in the truth. He came to give us the truth. The truth is his blood, his name, his word. And this is the truth. This is what the Bible is trying to tell us. We are set free from our sins. We are set free from our sins. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is the truth. The blood of Jesus is the truth. So you and I, let us spread this message to the ends of the earth. Let us ourselves hold to this message in our spirits. And even the disciples. Even the disciples in the Bible, they, gone, they went on to all, all consistently to say that the forgiveness of sins is preached by the Son of God. The forgiveness of sins is preached through the Son of God. He came to preach the forgiveness of sins. Yes. And this was, this was given. This came in the name of Jesus. This came in the name of Jesus. This is the gift we have received. So before thinking of any, so you and I, before we think of any, any uh, complications or any deceptions or any guilt within our spirits, what we are talking today is that the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the word of Jesus was given to us. It was given to you and me, the forgiveness of sins. We are set free. So, so every day, you and I, let us rely on the blood of Jesus let us rely on what God has given us, the life of God. The life of God, this was given to us, as I've just mentioned today. Those three things that we should remember about His name, the name of Jesus, about the blood of Jesus, about the word of Jesus, which was given to us. So let us rely on this and let us also spread this. Let us spread the blood. Let us spread the word. Let us spread the name of Jesus to the ends of the earth. Now let us pray in thanksgiving. Let us pray now together. Let us pray. Let us, let us be free from our sins. Let us receive the life of God. 
Life and truth and grace was given through the Son of God. And although Moses, although Moses was preached in the past, and these commands condemned us, all these laws, all these stipulations, they condemned us. Yet through Jesus, the Son of God, through his name, the truth was preached. Forgiveness of sins was preached to us. Now let us pray in thanksgiving. Hold to this blood. Jesus, 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 Jesus. we help. We pray that you'd be with us. We pray that you'd help us, that you would guide us and set us free by the blood. We pray that you would help us. We pray that you would guide us. We pray that you would inspire us by the Holy Spirit and that you would, that you would inspire us and that we can testify by the blood of Jesus, that we can testify by the blood of Jesus that we have been free from our sins, Lord Jesus. Please help us and guide us and let us know that we have been free from our sins by the blood of Jesus. We pray that we may rely on the Holy Spirit's testimony. We pray that we will trust in the blood of Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Holy Father, we thank you. We thank you. We pray that we may always hold more than anything else, more than anything else of what the Bible is trying to say, is that the Son of God, He came in the name of Jesus. He came in the name of Jesus. This is the name. This is forgives us of our sins. It sets us free. We have received this life, His blood, His word. We pray that we may hold, we may obey, we may accept, and also spread this message. We pray that we may always uh, be thankful for this grace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.